Hello, my name is Dr. Seth Jenny. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Exercise and Rehabilitative Sciences at Slippery Rock University of Pennsylvania. And today I'm going to be talking with Rebecca Johnson of Carthage College. And Rebecca, could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm an assistant professor in the Exercise and Sports Science Department at Carthage College. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about some topics in a book that you just wrote with human kinetics, and uh, we'll be t focusing on the technology integration within EdTPA. My first question to you is, what is EdTPA? So EdTPA is a teacher performance assessment, and it's an assessment that's used in about 41 states with about 20 of those states using that assessment to link to teacher licensing. So a lot of preparation programs teach their, uh, their students or uh, EdTPA calls them teacher candidates about uh, this, this assessment and how it evaluates teachers ability to plan, instruct and assess. So all of the red states there are states that uh, fully have a policy in place for EdTPA. The tan states are ones that use EdTPA and um, might use it as an assessment, but it's not linked to a policy. I believe Texas there is working towards the policy, and then the white states are the ones that are not using EdTPA. Excellent. Great. And so what are some of the challenges of EdTPA in the discipline of physical education? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I think that's what began uh, all of my work in this area, is that there's just a lack of support for students completing EdTPA and physical education. In most cases, their education faculty are teaching them a lot about how EdTPA relates to the classroom. Uh, also within physical education, they have to document learning that happens in all three domains. So to capture psychomotor learning, connect that to cognitive or affective domains, um, to capture that all in video within just the challenges of a gymnasium or an outdoor space and the setting that physical education usually occurs in. Mm -hmm. Particularly the audio capture, I'm sure, is pretty difficult with these large gym spaces and outdoor spaces. So what are the components of the assessment that may require the use of technology for EdTPA? Yeah, so I think the best way to talk about it is by task. So EdTPA has three different tasks. Task one is about planning, task two, instruction, and task three, assessment. In, in task one, it's all before or prior to teaching. So the technology that's used in this case is, is really just planning for what technology will be used in those lessons. So if you're teaching with heart rate monitors or pedometers, you would be you know, planning for that and putting those into your task one materials. But really in task two and task three is where more technology comes into play and where, where it matters. Uh, task two is you filming and recording lessons. And that's where the challenges come in with getting those visual examples of students engaged in the learning, recording your audio feedback, all those other instructional strategies that you have to capture on film. So that happens uh, for task two. And then in task three, you have to provide video evidence of the student work could provide video or audio evidence of your feedback to students while they're learning and the evidence of academic language use. So what technology is needed to be successful in providing evidence and artifacts for EdTPA? And, and those are relating to those tasks two and three, correct? Right. So in, in task two and three, you, you have to capture quality video and audio to be able to demonstrate uh, either what the students can do or your instruction and assessment. So, you know, I always tell people when they ask this question about what technology is needed, that it really depends on your situation. If, if your college or university has some materials for you to check out. So for example, at Carthage, our education department developed these EdTPA packs, mm -hmm. where it includes uh, an iPad on a tripod. And students can rent those out for a week at a time. So for us, we knew our, our students had the access to those two pieces of technology. And now we had to figure out how could we work with those 
and capture the audio. And so for me, it was going to our instructional technology person at the library and asking him what's going to work. And, and he suggested this um, high frequency uh, wireless microphone that could connect right into the iPad and then students could move around the space. The thing to think about is range really with audio. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, you, you need to test out where you might need to place that tripod so that you can have the range to move around your gym um, with whatever audio wireless device that you're connecting in. Some, some other apps that we've used in, in recording is recording with that iPad and tripod using the Swivel app. And the mm -hmm. nice thing about using that app itself is it does some compression and it's really easy to trim the videos, which are two things that students have to do before they submit is make sure that that video is of a, a certain size under um, 500 megabytes mm -hmm. and, and to a certain length. They can only submit 20 minutes of, of film. So by using an app like that, it, it helps with the, the trimming and compression. Uh, but then, you know, if, if you have the whole swivel uh, suite, you know, you can connect and, and use all of, of their devices to help you. If you don't and you're just using the app, you're going to need to keep that iPad close to the teacher so that you can capture all of that, that audio too. So when I was teaching in the physical education teacher education program at, at Winthrop University, we had very similar, we had an instructional technology center and then our students would go there and they would sign out a digital video camera. They would sign out the wireless microphones and tripod. One of the biggest issues where the students wouldn't test out the equipment before they went to record. So they would show up 15 minutes before their lesson, it's their quote unquote ed TPA lesson. And all of a sudden they'd start trying to recording and one of the batteries is dead. And so then they'd have to try to set up another day for them to record. And so there's definitely some of those issues that you run into that if you don't practice it in advance and, and set it up and make sure that the audio is coming through that, that you, you run into. I have here on the swivel, um, the newer version of the swivel, where it's one of those robotic motion detecting cameras, which, which you mentioned. One of the issues we ran into for that is that sometimes when they lose um, line of sight of who's being recorded, then the camera isn't necessarily recording the speaker. Those are just some of the things that, that we've run into. But what are some of the other challenges that you think that uh, in solutions to consider relating to EdTPA and, and technology? I have to just, you know, echo what you said is you have to practice and that's going to help reduce stress for teacher candidates too. just knowing that it works. They're already nervous about their lesson, executing it correctly. And then to add on to that, you know, they're, they're nervous about the technology working. So I always suggest, and in my ed TPA guide, I have a, a step-by-step -step process where in week two, as they're getting to know their students, they're testing out this technology and, and teaching, you know, maybe one of their repeat lessons from their cooperating teacher, where they're just getting to know this selected class and uh, the teacher has taught one fourth grade class and then they're, they're doing a repeat, but they're practicing with all the technology. And so I think just putting some of these things in place, practicing all of the technology. So if you teach an entire class, you're gonna find out what the range is on, on your audio and are there any issues with line of sight? Are there lighting issues in the gym? And so it also helps the, the students in those classes just become familiar with that mm. technology being there. So they're not, you know, running up and waving hi to, to the iPad and yeah. in the middle of the lesson, like, you know, elementary kids or high school students <laughs> might want to. Yeah, the high so, schoolers do that too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> The, the biggest solution I would say is to test everything out early, find out what issues you're having, and then work on solutions for those, you know, whether that is going to your instructional technologist. Sometimes you might have uh, access to some of those folks in that school, so you could ask, you know, them to troubleshoot, but just testing everything mm -hmm. out in advance. There's another issue that happens with the recording. So for EdTPA, it has to be a continuous recording. Oh, yeah. So you want to make sure that if your cooperating teacher is helping you out by pushing record before you start teaching, that you make sure that they understand that they shouldn't stop that recording at any point. They should just let it go for the whole time. 
And like you said, the battery issue, you wanna make sure that you have everything charged enough that it's gonna last for your whole lesson so that there aren't any breaks in that recording too. One of the um, issues with working with people with digital video in particular that I run into is understanding the difference between the project file when you're saving and that's the file that's specific to the video editing software versus the main video final finished product file, which is that MP4 compressed video file and making sure that people are submitting that final MP4 yeah. video file and not the project file that when you try to open that, then it tries, it, it won't open up on a different type of, of computer. That, yeah, that's one of those issues that I, I've talked about in, in the, my textbook. So can you give me any other um, examples of how teacher candidates have been successful with the use of technology with EdTPA? You know, I would say to, to differentiate between my students who um, have less stress going through this and more stress, it's really that being planned and prepared, like you said, just the labeling of your documents, having a thoughtful use of digital organization so that as you're creating these materials, you're storing them appropriately. I mean, EdTPA is so specific, like you said, about the format of how files can be submitted and the naming of them. And so if you can develop, you know, within your Google Drive or your cloud storage, however you're storing Set it up by task and by the, the components of the assessment and putting everything in there. And like you said, having those labels, you want to keep that raw big video file, even after in task two, where you've trimmed down to find your, your 20 minutes clips, because when you get to task three, you're going to need short video clips of students performing skills. You want mm -hmm. to keep that raw file and make sure you don't lose that because you might need to go back to it later. So I guess the solutions are to, to prepare in advance and to know what's coming next always in, in the assessment. And like I referenced back to the guide before, we have many different checklists of a checklist of before you film. What are the things you need to do and get organized? What are you looking for on to capture on that film? What do you need to do after? And reminding students of, of backing up these files, keeping them organized. It's it's just such a long, hard process, EdTPA is. And so for students who are out, student teaching, and maybe only meeting on a weekly basis with their, uh, their supervisor, they, they might not know what's the next step or what do I do? I, I've just filmed, now what? And so mm -hmm. it's just important to think about that digital organization and to know what's coming next in the ass assessment so that you can plan for that. And I think that's, that's kind of the difference between my students who struggle through the assessment and the ones who have been successful is that plan and, and following through on um, the steps and staying organized. Well, th thanks so much. Uh, highly knowledgeable about EdTPA and so knowledgeable that you wrote a book about it. Physical Education EdTPA Online Preparation Guide available through Human Kinetics. I know it's an ebook version of it. Is there also a hard copy or just ebook? It is just a digital resource. And part of that is there's so many videos. We have so much um, video examples of everything that are tied right into the steps of the process. So as students are going through, they can see examples right there. And it has sort of this checklist aspect to it. So students are seeing their completion rate as they work through the assessment and view the exemplars. And so we ultimately decided that that was the best way to keep it the most up to date. And, and, and when they purchase it, they have, you know, years of access to it. So they might purchase it early on in their teacher mm -hmm. prep program and end up finally, you know, using the workbook as they go through EdTPA. If you're interested in more about EdTPA, specifically with physical education, take a look at Human Kinetics, as well as the textbook that I authored, which is Technology for Phys Physical Educators, Health Educators, and Coaches. We have a whole chapter on digital video recording and editing, and obviously throughout the whole book, technology integration into physical education. This is available also on the uh, Human Kinetics website, as well as uh, Amazon.com. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Thank you, Seth. This was great.